Well, hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing data analysis using Excel part one in terms of reviewing the contingency tables as well as the odds ratios and risk ratios calculations. So these are the learning objectives. First off, explain the purpose of a contingency table, review odds ratio and risk ratio equations, and then we have three data sets in Microsoft Excel in which we would do some interesting calculations. So first off, with the contingency table, also known as the 2x2 two two table, we have different boxes that represent important information. So the first part on the left-hand side we have is the exposure status. So individuals who are exposed to a certain risk factor or a certain ailment um, that will cause them to be susceptible to the disease, and then we have non-exposed individuals. Then of course we have disease status, so disease, no disease, and then the total columns for the exposed status, the non-exposed, and then you can also read the, the totals going down in terms of individuals who are diseased and individuals who are not diseased. Then these are review of important equations. So we have the odds ratio equation. So that is AD divided by BC. If you're unfamiliar with this equation, please refer to the mini lecture in which I explain the purpose of odds ratio and the different components of the equation. Then we have the risk ratio equation and that of course is derived from the contingency table and then on the upper hand up on the upper part of the equation you have is the relative risk of the exposed group and of course the relative risk of the unexposed group. If you're also unsure as to how I was able to um, rearrange this equation from the 2x2 two two table, also please refer to the mini lecture in which I explain the purpose of risk and risk ratios and how that equation came to be and why we use it in different types of study designs. So here we have our data set one. So our data set one, of course, is a cohort study that is looking at um, smoking and the risk of lung cancer. And this data set, of course, is in this Excel sheet. So over here, I just put it there and I put the information. So of course, smoking status is located in the B column lung cancer in terms of individuals who have developed lung cancer is in the C column. D column is individuals who do not develop lung cancer. And then the last one is the totals in terms of people who were exposed to smoking and people who were not exposed to smoking. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves is the following. What is the risk of developing lung cancer? when exposed to smoke, okay? Or you can see this as a different question as, what is the risk of developing lung cancer if a patient was a smoker, okay? It's, a, it's calculating the same thing, however, the questions are worded differently. So, of course, for us to do that, we have to see which one is the exposed part. So, over here, this is the exposed area, and we can actually highlight this table and make that yellow. And then we can leave this as um, white, or we can put it a different color, like green, just to differentiate between the two. So, if we want to see what is the risk of developing lung cancer when exposed to smoke, could be smoking cigarettes, or what is the risk of developing cancer if a patient was a smoker. What we do is, this is the box that we want to do our calculation. So individuals who smoke, so that's 100. And then the total among that is 400. And I could put that in red as well. So to do that, we have the equal sign, and we have C4 divided by E4 and that gives us 0 0.25, okay? And then what if the following question is the following? Um, they ask us, what is the risk of developing lung cancer when exposed to smoke, whatever, smoking cigarettes? Or they ask us, what is when, sorry, 
it will be what is the risk of developing lung cancer when not exposed to smoke or it could be what is the risk of developing lung cancer if a patient was not a smoker two different questions but asking the same thing so over here we go to the no part in terms of individuals who are not exposed to smoke smoking cigarettes or if a patient is not a smoker and what we do is we have this number 500 red then a thousand red as well and what we do is see where it is so it's located in c5 so it'll be equal c5 and then the thousand is located in e5 so we divide that e5 and we get 0 0.05 then the last question is what is the risk ratio okay so the risk ratio of course is the relative risk of the exposed group divided by the unexposed group so we can see here our calculations for the first part is c is located in C10 and this is in C11. So what we do is equal sign C10 divided by C11 and that gives us 0 0.5 as a risk ratio. So this is our first data set. Then the second one we have is the following. It is a case control study and it basically they want to see smoking status and the risk of developing some ailment. So this ailment we can see we could put hypothetically would be asthma. So of course for a case control study, what you can only calculate is the odds ratio. And we'll do this together as a cohort. So I have the second data set open in Excel. I open this up for you all to see. And the first question or we'll ask is, what is the odds of being a case? Okay. In that case, of course, would be someone who has asthma. And these important numbers, of course, will be these two. So we put this in red. And what we do is the following. Let's make sure we all see the question together. Uh, let's cut and let's paste this here. All right, so that's the question. So we see that the odds of being a case is this would be A and this would be C. So it would be equal B3 divided by B4. It gives us this. And then the follow-up question will be um, what is the odds of being a control? So someone who does not have asthma. Okay, and this could be placed right here. Okay, so it will be these important numbers. And of course, this is located in C3, C4. So this will be equal sign, equal C3 divided by C4, and that gives you 0 0.9316. Then the last question will be, what is the disease odds ratio? The reason why we call this the disease odds ratio is because we are selecting individuals based on their disease status. And also there's really can't calculate temporality in a case control study because the individuals have already developed the illness. You're just trying to figure out their exposure level. So of course for the um, interesting equation of course you'll do AD divided by BC but in Microsoft Excel we're just going to make it easier for ourselves. So we're going to take the odds of being a case divided by the odds of being a control. So this here is located in B10. So equal B10 divided by B14. So this is the odds ratio. And how you interpret the odds ratio is the following. Interpretation. So you will say the odds of developing 
asthma among cases is 0 0.41 when compared to controls. That way. Or the other way you could put it as the likelihood of developing asthma among cases is 1.41 when compared to controls. Okay? Then the last one is the third data set. So this third data set is looking at the relationship between bear and obesity among women aged 25 to 64 from the Czech Republic. So this um, important data set was taken from a research paper that I read and they just wanted to see if there's any type of relationship in terms of um, women in Czech Republic who fall within this specific age range and if they would develop obesity or not. So of course this is a cohort study and we're going to calculate risk ratios. And also um, we could delve into calculating um, odds ratios as well. So this is the third data set. Okay. And I'll bring it up to you all for you all to see. So of course you have your exposure status, intake of bear, and then your disease status, someone's obese not obese is the non-disease and we have our interesting numbers so first question will be what is the risk of developing um hmm, of becoming obese what is the risk of becoming obese among um non-drinkers okay and what you have to put in mind is that this table is switched okay so sometimes you'll see a two by two table with non-drinkers and drinkers but to be very consistent I'm gonna put drinkers and then I'm gonna switch it to non-drinkers in a next video I'll explain to you how to use this specific specific data set and show you how the calculation is flipped okay so let's be consistent. So over here you have the 560, which is important. And then you have not obese. And then you have your total columns. So 560 is, is located in B3, and then the total for that is D3. So that's B3 divided by D3, okay? Then the next question asks you, what is the risk of becoming obese among non-drinkers. I apologize for this. This question should read drinkers. Okay. So the first thing we calculated, what is the risk of becoming obese among drinkers? So that's 560 divided by 922. Then the next question is, what is the risk of becoming obese among non-drinkers? Okay. Highlight these important numbers. And first off is the people who are non-drinkers among obese, so that's B4, so equal B4 divided by D4. Make sure you, you have your division sign, and that's 0 0.227. Then the last question is, what is the risk ratio among this? So of course, what we could do is the following. You just take these two and divide it. So that's equal sign, zero point, sorry. So that's located in B10, so equal B10 divided by B13. And that's 2.672, that's important. Then what if they ask you, um, what is the odds of someone who is a drinker well, sorry, what is the odds of becoming obese if someone is a drinker? And then they ask you another question. What is the odds of becoming obese if someone is not a drinker? The last question is, what is the odds ratio of, what is the odds ratio? 
in this case, it will be exposure odds ratio. So these are important um, calculations that you can do on your own. And I'll actually revisit this in a new um, lecture that discusses um, data analysis using Microsoft Excel. Thank you all for listening, and I see you in the next educational video.